Hello and welcome to the Chemistry Academy. In this video we're going to go through the National 5 assignment task. I'm going to take you through the SQA assignment assessment task guide and just highlight some key things that you might want to think about when you are writing up your assignment and your exam conditions just so you can try and get the most marks out of your assignment. So hopefully you have picked uh, an assignment topic or you maybe even done your experiment already. Common topics could be things like investigating an effect of a factor on the rate of reaction or looking at the amount of energy that's released from different fuels and so hopefully you've got your topic and you know what your experiment is going to be your teacher should hopefully have helped you with that so once you've gathered your results and things you then probably want to start thinking about how you're going to write it up you probably have some things already that you know of and um, like your aim before you even start the experiment but there's still some wee tweaks that you can make to that in order to make sure that you're getting the most marks you can. So this candidate guide should be given to you when you are doing your write-up by your teacher. However, you can access it on the SQA website at any time you want. If you just type into Google SQA National 5 Chemistry Assessment eh, Assignment, and then it should be the first PDF file that appears in your Google search. So the first thing is your aim. The aim is pretty straightforward. You're trying to find something, determine something, but what you need to make sure is that the words in your aim match up what you're actually measuring. So, for example, if you were to say um, that you were investigating the effect of concentration on the rate of reaction, then you need to obviously be changing the concentration of a substance and you also need to be actually measuring the rate, so calculating the average rate. Um, if your aim was to determine how the effect of concentration affects reaction time then your time reaction time would be what you'd be measuring commenting on and um, other places this can be a bit confusing is if when you're doing like fuels if your aim was to determine how the number of carbons affects the energy released from a fuel then you need to make sure that at the end of your experiment you can write a conclusion on how the number of carbons affects the amount of energy released from a fuel. So you just need to bear that in mind when you're writing your aim. The more specific you make it, you kind of make it a bit harder for yourself. So try and keep it generic if you can. So just something like, yeah, how, to, how concentration affects the rate of reaction or to compare the amount of energy released from different fuels, okay, or different hydrocarbons. So that's just something to bear in mind with your aim. Your report should have a title as well. Um, that just goes towards the final structure mark, but that's just something vague, like on the general topic. So if you were doing fuels, it'd be energy from fuels or something like that. Or if you were doing rates, it'd be um, rates of reactions would be like your general title. Okay. The next thing you've got then is your underlying chemistry. So this is kind of like an open-ended question. If you think of like a using your knowledge of chemistry question, that's how they're marked. Um, and you want it to be as specific to your assignment and experiment as you can possibly make it. So if you are doing something to do with rates, you want to make sure that you are talking about the factor that you're investigating in your experiment. So if you're looking at the effect of temperature, there's no point in including any information about concentration and effect of concentration because you won't get any credit for that because that's not what you're investigating in your assignment. So just make sure your underlying chemistry is as specific to your experiment as you can make it. So if you're talking about fuels, um, use the fuels that you're using in your experiment as an example of fuels. If your aim involves talking about referring to the number of carbons in the molecule and then how it affects the amount of energy, make sure you have something in your underlying chemistry that outlines like the different hydrocarbons that have different number of carbons, what they're called, etc. Okay, so you need to make sure that your underlying chemistry ties in with your experiment. So pick the chemistry within your experiment and talk about it. So if it is the energy from fuels, talk about how you calculate the energy released from a fuel using the energy from fuels calculation and things like that. Um, so then it comes on to the data and handling thing. So the, you've got, first of all, your method. So this is just a very brief, and brief is the key word here, a description of your experimental approach. And um, so you really ideally want to have a diagram with like a couple of sentences after at most. 
If you can describe your experiment in a few sentences, then just do that. But the whole point is that it can just be imagined by somebody so they don't need a detailed step-by-step -step instruction. It's just a couple of brief se sentences to explain what you're doing. So they've got some examples here that the voltage of cells measured for different cells using different pairs of metals as electrodes. That's pretty basic, but you can understand and visualize what the person's done. They've set up a cell, changed some different metal electrodes and measured the voltage. Okay, but like I said, if you do you want a diagram, you could add a diagram in, but you must have some sentences as well. As it says here, a diagram without any notation, annotation is insufficient, so you can't just have a diagram. Um, so keep it very brief, a diagram, one or two sentences max, um, no more than that. So then you, uh, for mark 3b then, um, this is where you've got raw data. So for it to be sufficient raw data, essentially it just needs to um, be appropriate to your aim, basically. And you need to have repeats. Uh, so like it says here, if you are looking to investigate the effect of ethanol, or to investigate ethanol acid concentration, different types of vinegar, you would need a minimum of three different brands. So if you were doing effective concentration, that probably means you're gonna to need to have done at least three different concentrations. If you were doing effective temperature, you probably need at least three different temperatures. If you were looking at the energy release when you burn different types of fuels, then you're probably looking at having had to test at least three different types of fuels. Okay, um, the other thing you need to remember here is make sure you've done a repeat so that you should do the experiment more than once so you can calculate an average. So for every concentration you've uh, done a reaction for or every fuel that you've calculated the energy released for, you should have done the experiment for that twice. Okay, this um, underlay the raw data you can take in for your write-up but you're not allowed to have any averages or anything. Um, written on the bit of paper, it's only like the raw results that you would have taken noted down when you were doing your experiment. The other thing I should have said about the underlying chemistry, you can take full printed pages in to help you with un your underlying chemistry, but you can't take in like edited snippets of information. So if you go to like BBC Bite Size or something, there's usually web pages you can print summaries for if you're struggling for content or you might have textbooks and things in your class as well and um, that you can use. So then you need to put your table, your raw data into a lovely table with nice headings. Just make sure your headings have units um, and don't write the units next to the numbers in the table. That's a big no-no. So head units go in the headings. Make sure the headings are clearly labeled and your numbers are nice and neat, okay? Then you have to then go and do a calculation. So calculate an average. So this will usually just be from your repeat experiments. So you would calculate the average rate or you would calculate um, an average energy release from fuels. So it's basically just taking your two experimental results for each different um, experiment and calculating the average. So adding them together and usually dividing by two. You just need to make sure that you do calculate these right correctly. So one thing to watch out for is just rounding. Make sure your rounding is correct. If you incorrectly round then you will immediately lose your average calculation mark. Um, then you have got the information you need to find from the internet. So hopefully you found on the internet someone that's done a similar experiment to you that's got results that are similar to yours that you can compare your results with. So if it was the energy from fuels investigation you were doing, you would hopefully have a graph that shows the amount of energy that's released for the different fuels or like per how many carbons are in the, the alkane or something like that that's similar. <laughs> Try and get the data to be as similar to your data as possible in terms of what they've measured. Um, so if you are doing the alcohol like by name, so if you've got methane, ethane, propane and you've drawn a bar graph, then try and find someone else that's drawn a bar graph. Um, it just makes it a little bit easier to compare, but it's not the end of the world. It just might mean that you want to change your data to match what you found on the internet. So instead of drawing a bar graph with methane, ethane, propane, then do a line graph with one carbon, two carbons, three carbons. Okay, so hopefully that makes a bit of sense. Um, so you've got your internet, 
source, you just need to also make sure you've got the URL reference for that. Um, and you need to put the full URL reference in your uh, write-up. So you will be able to print that out though and take it in to just stick in. You don't need to memorise that. Then you've got your graph. So this is what I was kind of referring to already. You have to take your average results and put them into a graphical form. So say you were doing the average rate of a reaction at different concentrations. Along the bottom, you would have the concentrations and up the y-axis, you would have the average or the, yeah, the average rate and you would plot a scatter graph and draw a line of best fit. Okay, a line of best fit goes as close to all the points as possible. Um, don't force it through the zero, zero line. Just try and get it as close to all the points as possible. Um, if you were doing effective temperature, though, that's not a line of best fit. That's um, You just do a dot to dot for that one. So you would have temperature along the x-axis at the bottom and then your rate at the y-axis. And again, you would just plot the points and connect them up. If you were doing, like I mentioned already, the energy from fuels, you have the option to do a bar graph where you write the names of the fuels along the bottom and then just have the energy released up the side. Just make sure to put your units on your axes as well. So for rate, it would have to be like centimeters cubed per second if that's what you're measuring the rate in, or if it's the fuels that usually kilojoules um, for the energy. So you could do a bar graph if you've got the names of the fuels. If you're do going by number of carbons, then you would want to do a line graph in that instance. Just if you are doing the line graph, make sure somewhere in your report in the underlying chemistry, you have a reference to what carbon, if what molecules have one carbon and two carbon. So have somewhere, like if you've got methane, ethane, propane, one carbon, two carbon, three carbons, just have a picture of those in your underlying chemistry, a drawing of methane, ethane and propane and state how many carbons are in it. Okay, that's just one thing to watch out for if you are doing that experiment. So your graph just needs to be a suitable format, so correct bar graph, line graph, scatter graph, um, and also has clear headings and units on those headings, and then accurately plotted. So that's where your four graph marks are coming from. Then you've got the analysis mark. So the analysis mark is where you're comparing your data to what you find on the internet. And this is where it's helpful if they're measuring or kind of been using the same thing. But it's just a general comparison, um, identifying if there's anything different. Just make sure it is relevant to your sources though, um, and try and pick out key specific things that are different. So if um, your results showed that less energy was released from the fuels than the internet results, then just make that statement. But if they both then show that as the number of carbons increased, uh, increased the energy released increases, then that's a similarity. So you kind of want to look at what pattern are both your internet results and your experimental results showing like within the data. So as concentration increases, what happens to the rate? that sort of thing and then also then compare your results to the internet so is the rate slower in your experiment than on the, the internet source and or if is the energy released from the fuel lower in your experiment than in the internet source okay so can look at the patterns that the data is showing you and then make a comparison of the uh, actual values in your data versus the internet data and then little conclusion mark. So this is pretty straightforward. You just need to basically look at your aim, rephrase it as a question and answer that question. But it needs to be supported by all of the data in your report. So again, the more specific you make your conclusion, the harder you make it for yourself. So just try and make it a generic thing. So if your aim was to investigate the effect of concentration on the rate of reaction, just say if you found out that concentration increases the rate of a reaction, then you make that statement in your conclusion. As the concentration increases, the rate of a reaction increases. It doesn't need to be any more specific than that. Don't add in values and things because your values probably don't match the internet's values and then therefore your conclusion isn't based on everything in the report. So just try and keep it as general as possible. If the pattern you found in your experiment doesn't match the pattern that was found in the internet, then you just need to include both those things in the conclusions. You'd need to say, from my experiment, I found this, but the internet source tells me this. Okay, so just make sure your conclusion 
involves everything that you've got in your report. Then we've got the evaluation marks. So these are hard to get. Um, if you've done your experiment really well, then you want to probably use positive evaluative statements. Um, so things that were good and that's why your results were good. Um, you do get one mark, you can get a, an evaluation mark for reviewing your internet source, which is quite an easy one to get. Um, you can either talk about your internet source being reliable because it's from an educational website that's been peer reviewed um, or something similar, or a government website that must have been peer reviewed. Peer reviewing means that it's been checked by lots of people. So that's usually an easy evaluative statement to get if you mention the val validity of your source. Um, it could be not very valid if it was just from a random website that is unlikely to have been peer reviewed. So pick that as one of your evaluative statements. And then for the second one, pick something to do with your experiment. Um, so if your results, like I said, were good, explain why they were good. So um, let me think for an example. So say that you... When you, if you were doing effective concentration, you rinsed and dried the beakers every time. Um, this would have helped you get more accurate results because it meant that the concentrations weren't being diluted um, or altered by any contamination or any excess water in the beakers. Okay, so things like that. Try and make it specific to your experiment. That's what you want to do if your results are very good and all close together. If your results are all a bit over the place, Pick one that looks like an outlier, the one that looks like it's probably wrong, um, and explain why that might have been wrong. So from the energy and from fuel side of things, it might have been that the distance between the tip of the flame and the copper can was changed and it was further away, so it showed less energy being released or um, the temperature change was smaller or the maybe, well, I don't know, the temp that you just have to try and think it's hard to say without knowing your experiment so just look at your data and see if you can see anything that looks a bit weird if there's anything that looks a bit weird pick a negative evaluative statement but if your data looks perfect just say i did this and this made my results good but all of your statements need to re result uh, need to relate back to how they improved your results so how did they make your results more accurate okay you need to try and be quite specific with these ones but at least you only have one of them to write. And then the last marks are just for getting a good, putting a title and getting a nice structure. And then that's you. So the last couple marks are definitely the hardest. Um, but like I said, have a look at your data and see what you can pick out. But if there is nothing wrong with it and it looks, everything's very consistent, then don't write a negative evaluative statement. Make sure you write a positive one. Okay, so I hope that helps. Good luck with your assignment write-up. I hope it will go well. Um, and if you found this video helpful, please give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you again soon.